morning. Can I welcome everybody to Friday morning mass here at St. Michael's in Hicksville. The entrance antiphon. You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom priest for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. As we gather today to hear about the way that Jesus provides, teaching the crowds of people before him and providing bread for their physical hunger. So we come to be nourished by the Lord in our faith and in so many ways in our life. We prepare for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sin, and we ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to put out to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor of, or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ, Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, one thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted 
and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. Church that we're still here 
that it still exists, that it continues to grow and, and inspire people all over the world. And, and, and it's like that, that just has to assure us that there's something more than just human origin or human influence that's part of this. I mean, can you think of anything that's, that, that, that's, that's um, ma maintained in existence and an influence for 50 years or 100 or a couple hundred or a thousand? You know, it's like some of the great writers and people like that. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, so we've got pieces of what they maybe recorded or written or said. But, but it's like there's nothing in comparison to um, what the church does, you know, how it continues to uphold the, the truth of God and of Jesus Christ and how that truly is known by people all over the world and has a profound influence on so many people. It's like clearly this goes beyond human origin, but is of God. So that's an important reminder to us always as maybe we at times struggle with our faith and what really is true and who do you believe and, you know, all of those kind of things that enter into our minds as far as questions and skepticism and, and doubt to know that again and again we um, need to come back to God and to the church and to that which proclaims these um, the, these universal truths, these things um, that, that are influenced not just by popular opinion or human understanding, but somehow are, are, um, are, are professed and, and preserved by God himself. So, 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 so again, so that's a beautiful reminder and an invitation to us to again and again turn to, that, to, to God and those things that are divine that inspire us certainly in, in, in our lives here and for us with that hope of eternal life and joy with God for eternity. And, and, and then um, along those lines, in the gospel, we hear the familiar passage of Jesus feeding the multitude, multiplying the loaves and the fish. And, um, you know, I thought about that, that that could lead to a series of homilies, you know, talking about, so, so I won't make a series, but, but just that whole, that whole reality about how does God nourish us? So we hear in this example that Jesus is teaching the crowds, so he continues to try to inspire them and lead them to understand the truth of God's kingdom and the important ways that, that, that result from accepting that truth and living by it. So it's like Jesus is concerned about their sort of spiritual and psychological and mental um, health and well-being. But then also we see that he recognizes they're out there in a deserted place and they might be hungry. You know, and so he also provides um, physical food for their, 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 their physical hunger. And, and when we think about those, it's like, like um, certainly people of faith, as people of faith, we realize that the great impact that, that, that Jesus has upon us, you know, inspiring us by his word, by the many ways that he touches our life, and especially at Mass and Holy Communion when we're able to receive that bread, blessed and broken, not a, just for some physical um, nourishment, but, but clearly nourishes us with Jesus himself. So, so we can think about that, but then we might also wonder, it's like, well, okay, how does, does God really provide for my physical hunger anymore? Um, and, 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 you know, because it's like we go to the store or we plant things or grow our own or, you know, that we have so, uh, so much uh, abundance of food all around us that not many of us find ourselves out in the wilderness, you know, being, being hungry and, and looking for where we're going to get our next bite to eat. But when you think about it, I mean, so even something that is as simple as plants growing, you know, so, so maybe this time of year, farmers are certainly looking at getting into the fields. Um, people are looking at planting the gardens and those kind of things. So, I, I, I mean, it's like truly a miracle of life that you can put a seed in the ground and it grows and produces so much. And that, then, then we can process that or use that in, in, in one way or another as food. Now, maybe scientists or horticulturalists or those who study um, plants in, in their life can give some explanation for how that happens. But, um, but still, I mean, it, it just goes beyond our human ability to understand. You know, how can a seed sort of die and then grow and produce so much? So even that, in a sense, is a way that God provides for our physical hunger. So as we gather for prayer today, we're, we're reminded of that truth and that beauty and that blessedness that is offered to us um, by the church, ultimately by God. And, and so we, as we contemplate 
think some of the things of the world around us we're led to think about that, that awesomeness of God, that divinity that is um, so inspirational. And, and, and we think of the ways that God really does nourish us, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls, helping us to um, manage our way through the course of this life and ultimately filling us with that hope of, of, of eternal life, of, of being united with Him for um, all eternity in the marvelous kingdom of heaven. Can there be anything more valuable or more important than that which nourishes our, 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 our spiritual needs, guiding us in those ways of God, leading us to eternity? So may we rejoice in the great abundance of the ways that God truly provides for us in, in all time. Gracious and ever living God, we gather in your presence, grateful that you are with us, that you continually understand our hungers and our fears and our worries and our needs, and that in marvelous ways you provide for us. With faith, we offer now our needs and our prayers. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for Bishop Thomas and all the bishops and priests and deacons and religious. May God inspire them and help them to, to uh, strengthen our faith and our ultimate trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. We pray for those who suffer greatly from fears or, or uncertainties or, or sufferings or trials. May God be close to them and, and grant them the care they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for religious vocations, that men and women will be open to God's call, to a special ministry and, and, and honoring of God and serving of God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who know the truth, but fail to accept it and live by it. May their minds and hearts and, and their wills be open to all the inspiration and good that God desires for every one of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those involved with education, for students and teachers and parents and administrators. May God guide them during these days, granting them a, a, a desire to continue to learn and to be creative and, and develop their minds and their spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who mourn, those who experience sadness and sorrow and distress during these days. May they find hope and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially today we remember Donna Rice. May she and all the faithful departed be led to that eternal vision of uh, of glory and blessedness with God and the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the farmers, for favorable weather for them, and for all who seek to plant gardens. May God, God them, grant them favorable weather and bless their efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to remember your own prayers. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we give thanks for your great goodness and the truth that you offer us that continues to lead us to the security and peace and hope that we find in you alone. We ask that you hear our prayers and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful for his death as our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly host, with heavenly powers with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the heights. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. takes away the sins of the world. 
Bless her those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. our Lord was handed over for our, our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Hallelujah. And again, I'll leave you in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Finally, the prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust in the hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits 